Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is a mastery empowerment course on New Earth One Network. And what better person for a New Earth One Network event than this beautiful New Earth One, New Earth Way Shower, Meg mm -hmm. Benedicte, who has been working tirelessly for decades to truly anchor as many people to the 5D Earth plane as possible. She is going to talk about how we can ascend from 3D to 5D and fully activate the 5D plane. Hello, Meg. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Loren. Great to be here with you and everyone on the on the webcast. It's always a pleasure. This is an interesting course today. It is all about moving from 3D to 5D. And you're going to give us some of the elements about it. In a way, it couldn't be simpler. That doesn't mean it's so easy. But this <laughs> is really such a soft and delicate path, is it not? Yeah, we, I think we tend to overcomplicate it because it's something new to us, you know, and it probably has never been really accomplished uh, on the planet like what we're doing at this time around. So I think our mind tries to make it more than it is. Now, the plan is pretty simple, I think, and clear. But as you said, um, going through it may not be always as simple because we're literally transforming ourselves at the molecular level and learning how to embody our soul presence in ways we've never done before so that can kind of maybe make the mind go oh there's no way i can do that <laughs> but what we're trying to do is go yes yes you can do it we're all doing it we're all at different stages of it and let's just kind of have a nice clear to me i i need to know kind of what i'm doing and where i'm going so having a nice clear path to follow. Yes. And so as um, you work with people embodying the soul presence, what is it that keeps the soul away from us yeah. and what can we do to anchor it in? It's a good question because it, it, when I first started, I had my awakening was in um, January 94. And back then, of course, everything was much denser and slower and more difficult. Uh, since 2012, everything has been speeding up in the quickening and things are moving easier. But back then, it was very clear to me when I would try to connect either to my own soul or if I was like working with somebody and I say, okay, let's line up and connect with your soul. And I go, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> where is it you know and it's not inside it's not in our hearts it's not in our bodies it was up higher dimensions in the aura it's like okay that doesn't seem right it seems like we should be one with our soul presence and so as i was kind of you know troubleshooting trying to figure this out it became clear that there's a couple things one we're we're very dense. So we're trying to raise our energy frequency up into higher, higher octaves that the soul can actually find a coherence with and begin to assimilate in. So first thing we do, we raise our energy frequency. Second thing, so, and we're also like um, detoxing and purging density, right? So we're, we're dropping centuries, lifetimes of density, and it can be in lots of different forms. It could be emotional trauma. It could be self cellular memory, it could be ancestral lineage, you know, it could be uh, built up karma. So there's lots of stuff that has to kind of peel away. And then the third thing that's blocking it is this ego persona that we have. Um, in my opinion, of course, everyone has what they feel is the ego. But to me, I feel the ego is really kind of a shadow program trying to control the human reality, you know, the human body. And so when we begin bringing in more of our soul presence, the ego's like, oh, hell no. And it's like trying to lock down the crown, lock down the right, the brainstem and, and lock up the chakra column. And it's like, no, 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 I control this. So we have that, you know, kind of push back and forth a bit with the ego as we begin this um, assimilation of the of the soul in. And so those are, oh, and one more thing too, we're living in a very polarized planet. And so, you know, we have the opposite poles and they're creating this kind of push pull uh, in the electromagnetic field where opposites attract. So think of it like for every positive action you try to make, you have this equal pushback of negative reaction. That's what polarity is in the field. So as you're trying to bring in uh, a beautiful soul light, soul presence, it's in this polarized body, right? And it's like, 
push, 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 you know, and it can't get in, it can't stay in. So I found any time that I have like a, like an emotional reaction, there goes the soul out again. So any, you know, so our own polarity needs to be maintained, you know, mastered. We have to master the ego and we have to master our polarity so that we're learning how to live more in what's called zero point where it's all uh, coherent and stable and neutral and non-polarized. Then the soul just, it's so smooth, just flows right in, holds in. So there's a couple of things there <laughs> to work on. <laughs> It's interesting that the emotional reaction instantly takes us out of that. Um, right out. And it seems like now more and more these days, we're able to sense that energy before we even have to react or we're being really sensitive yeah. um, from others. Maybe that's our telepathy that we're picking up on, but it seems like we're really sensitive and it might just be um, this global situation of, um, social distancing, let's call it social respect, but it seems like we could get um, a little cranky. So as we master the ego and that polarity, what are ways, this is really where your quantum vortex mm -hmm. work comes in because we're really mm -hmm. changing the energy field in that we polarity. We are, we are. So we're using techniques. Uh, I learned them uh, just in, uh, uh, meditation with uh, Archangel Metatron, but it is ancient, you know, ancient practices, you know, very, very um, time tested. And it's about learning to establish that kind of Zen place inside. Me uh, meditation is a must. You have to learn how to be able to breathe and calm everything down and slow everything down and get into that presence uh, so that you can begin to neutralize polarity. Um, I was guided to use the sacred geometry of the infinity eight. And when you apply that, so we, uh, we can apply it anywhere. You can apply it at any of the chakras, especially let's say if you, um, I, I run it at the heart and the left, right brain just establish zero point in the field. But let's say you, you get really pissed off, you know, you're all riled up and you feel it in your gut. You can run an infinity in your solar plexus and start to neutralize because what it's doing, you know, the, the figure eight, it's a unifier, but it's a balancer, right? And so it's trying to take this opposite energies, right? And bring them into the center where they connect, unite, and poof, there goes the charge. It just is amazing how fast it works. <laughs> Good. Okay. That is where we are really um, immaculate with our energy and we use these tools. We are given a really great opportunity these days to use those tools in a new way. And so before we get into a few slides that you're going to show, there's a course level here let's talk a little bit about um, some of these incredible gateways coming up mm, because yes. um, there's always gateways like this, but these gateways allow us an opportunity to really purify and move through some of these densities. So can you share with us um, uh, the importance of these various gateways that are continual? Yes, yeah, so every year we have kind of our standard ones, um, but this one feels so different. So we have three, usually it's only two, but we have three eclipses coming, two in June and one in July. And then in August, we have the 8-8 Lionsgate. So boom, 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 we have four in a row. Um, and it's been quiet. You know, we've been on this kind of pause, right, for a couple months since, um, especially since 444. That was like, to me, the big gateway of this year. For, I get goosebumps. <laughs> 444 had it, man. It was like, whoa, it rocked and rolled. And so then we've been integrating since then. So it's been a couple months integrating and clearing whatever, you know, that gateway was, uh, uh, helping us with but how I approach gateways is that they're basically like, like interdimensional doorways that open up to the galactic center to the to the universe to to higher dimensional uh, uh, consciousness and when we take advantage of that it's quite powerful so we're able to I, there it's like a think of it like as you go through that gateway through that door it's like a threshold point and you pop up to the next level so each time you go through a gateway 
boom, you keep ascending up to the next level. And so they're propelling us up. You know I mean? They're literally here, cosmic doorways, you know, cosmic gateways to propel us higher and higher. And usually I'm like flat out after these. <laughs> I have to, uh, you're right, I have to adjust to it and integrate whatever came through. So when the portals open to the galactic center, we get these really strong infusions of photonic and plasma light uh, that, come in and they start working with our DNA, they start working with our light body. And so that's the threshold. You're, you're activating more of your light body. You're crystallizing more of your DNA. And so each time we just get more and more advanced. So they can be um, powerful. Like on June 20th, we not only have the solstice, but a solar eclipse at zero degree cancer. I can't even imagine what that one's going to be like, but even as I tune into it, the energy just feels like, wow. So I think is that, that is that like newness for you. If it's a zero degree, mm -hmm. is it like unchartered, totally a fresh start? It feels like it to me. Yes. Yes. And it's interesting too, because it's the completion of the cancer Capricorn nodes that we've been in for two years we're moving into Sag and Gemini. And so I think that's the final cancer uh, uh, eclipse for nine years or something. So it's a kind of a, also kind of a full circle in a way, right? You know, zero, so it's the end and the start of all that you have you evolved from two years of all this activity in cancer and Capricorn, especially Capricorn. That one's going to be June, July 5th. July 5th is the Capricorn eclipse. So those are the two kind of bookends of this two-year cycle. They're, they're, they're rocking and rolling the, the world right now, especially Capricorn. Throw into the mix a beautiful <laughs> Pluto-Jupiter conjunction for the first time in 200 years on 444 of 2020, April 4th yes. of 2020. But then two more times this year in the mix of what you're talking about with these gateways, what this did is, you, when you, what was that energy of the 444 like for you? It, very, it seemed very royal and regal and that's unified. True. That's true. I felt it really as the new earth hologram is now coming in to replace the one that's completing and collapsing. So it felt to me, you know, being that, this is this is your my mission. You know, we're here to really anchor in and bring in and, and not only bring it in, but activate it and start living in this new earth hologram. It's the fifth dimensional and higher hologram. And and I just felt like uh, even when um, I did a global activation that day and I kept hearing from Metatron, think of it like your tent poles and we're all grounding in that new earth hologram to live in. It felt it felt really um that was a threshold day that felt like a real burst into the new uh, uh earth plane and and pulling all our energy out wherever we were still kind of attached to the old one you know we're just kind of extricating ourselves out of that old one and into the new one yes wow that's why it feels like everything has changed you and i were talking before we started and there's so many systems that are new. In fact, New Earth One Network came really into, it, it came about five years ago in this big download that was given to the humanity. There's many of us mm -hmm. with this idea, but it just seemed like everything accelerated to a whole new level in a serious get her done game on like attitude. And everything is different. Every It's like going back to the old ways, feels like putting on a tight pair of jeans or, <laughs> Um, an old pair of shoes that just don't fit anymore. That's true. And, and I agree with the whole feeling that it's game on. It's, it's, um, it's time for us to get active. And so it's time for us to get really, uh, I kept getting last year, 2020 is the year uh, the Ascension is going to become physical. Well, that is true, right? It's physical through even the pandemic, but it's also physical in that we need to be like the activists of the new earth. We need to get out and really work it now. We can't just be all alone meditating in our in our little sacred you know space anymore. We you can still keep doing that, but now also take it out. So it's it's finding ways that you resonate with of how how are you going to contribute to building this new earth and it and it could be in all kinds of ways. You know, it doesn't have to be on a picket line. You know, you can be volunteering, you can be joining, you know, these new uh, systems that are starting up, you know, so there's lots of ways you could write about it, you could teach about it. So there's 
just get active. <laughs> And get wildly creative for new earth. There's so many systems. We're not going to go into that now because we're going to talk about really how we raise our frequency to fully anchor into 5D. But I just want to share one quick thing is that everything is up for grabs. And can you imagine if all light workers begin to use some um, their local newspapers to write mm -hmm. letters to the editor to start to implant these ideas into yeah. the consciousness of the collective? Everyone is open. We're even seeing 13 year old young ones writing these beautiful letters to the editor. So it is all happening. People are awakening on a whole new level. I think I heard the other day that instead of um, the 90% majority that are still asleep, we're now at 80%. Uh -huh. So that's been an increase by twofold of the awakened ones. That's very yeah, exciting. That's very Yay. exciting. <laughs> yes. Okay, so you are going to share your screen because we're talking about ascending from this 3D, getting really out of the old and fully anchoring through the heart center into the 5D. So let's pay um, a visit to the screen and see what Meg's got here. Thank you, Meg. Oh, you're welcome. So this is just a couple slides from a class I'm going to be teaching. And it is uh, just a quick little overview. Um, so we're talking about ascension. And so for anyone who this may be a new idea or a new thought, um, it's a stair-step process of a lifting it into this higher holographic realm of enlightenment. So that's when we talk about the new earth, we talk about the 5D hologram, the 5D plane. That's what it is. We, we keep spiraling up. We keep raising our frequencies and our consciousness and getting into that higher holographic realm. And going through this process since 1994, um, I've, I've been noticing there's kind of certain stages or phases of it. They may overlap a bit as well, but first we have the awakening and that's when your mind actually begins to step back and become more of an observer of reality instead of the program just running through you unconsciously. So this is where we begin to realize, oh, there's more to just this physical world. So the awakening happens and that's just like blows open everything. And that's where you go into, you know, kind of investigating spirituality and trying out meditation and you start doing lifestyle changes just all of that. As you get into it, this is what we were talking about earlier of the transmutation stage. And this can go on for a while. I'm still transmuting and I've been doing this for 26 years. So just know this is a lifestyle you're stepping into. This isn't something you're going to do in a weekend. This is something that you're actually going to be very involved in. And, and of course, the transmutation stage um, involves all this clearing. And then we go as you clear and clear and think of it like you're you're purifying your sacred vessel so the soul can embody in. That's our goal. We want to become living divine humans here, living in uh, Gaia's fifth dimensional field. Um, so during ascension, the there is DNA and consciousness upgrades, as I mentioned earlier, and these trigger internal clearing of old density and trauma. And this could be, you know, on all levels. So it could be not just physical, um, but you could be clearing uh, emotional trauma that's been even from past lives. So this we're we're working on the whole aura. So that's your entire earthly akashic records and all that's held in there, and that includes the past lives. Um, I have found the mind. The mind is probably the most infiltrated. So we have to get in there and clear all of this programming out of the mind. It could be even negative thought forms, could be patterns that are limiting us or sabotaging us. So we have to clear that out. And then, of course, the spiritual work. This is where we're working more uh, with our over soul working with if there's any like soul fragmenting and soul retrieval we need to do. So so this is this is um, you know, like I said, this is like a lifestyle you're going to work with, but you're in a way piecing yourself back together from all these levels. And as we talked about earlier, ascension is balancing of polarity. So mastering the ego and choosing service to others with wisdom and honoring free will. We're, we're moving away from being in a way controlled to now being sovereign beings. And how do we live as sovereign beings? That's all coming through as you ascend. All right, let's go quickly to the dimensions because I find that there's kind of a, a lot of info out there that's a little confusing on dimensions. So when we talk about 3D to 5D, what does that even mean? 
All right, so when we ascend higher, we have access to higher dimensional experiences. We are not leaving 3D or 4D. So just making sure everybody understands that we're not getting in some ship and leaving the planet, okay? We are staying here and we are adding additional dimensional experiences to ourselves. So let's just kind of walk through the dimensions and this is how I experience them. Um, 3D is our physical, world, our physical dimensions of height, width, and depth. Those are the three dimensions of the physical world, okay? So when we talk about 3D, it's just talking about, you know, everything that's physical, physical atoms, particles, all right? 3D. 4D involves the astral dimension. So this is the astral plane that's around the body. It involves the uh, mental body, the, the emotional body. Those are all in the astral plane. Also, I experienced the fourth dimension, and this is basic physics of time and space. So when we're in time, time creates, a, like, think about point A, point B. The distance between point A and point B is space, and it creates time to travel from point A to point B. That is basic physics, you guys. That's what the fourth dimension is. It's time and space. We are trying to evolve beyond time, right? We're trying to get out of separation consciousness. We're trying to... Uh, ascend into a dimensional uh, reality that isn't limited to just the physical three dimensions or time of the astral plane. So this is where we get into fifth dimension. When I get into fifth dimension, it's a one, it's a feeling field. So we enter it with our heart. This is why I have to do the heart healing, you know, get the heart open, get the heart full of love. That love vibration in the heart opens us to the fifth dimension. Also, the fifth dimension is about living in integrity. So this is where what we say and what we think and what we do, how we behave, it's all in integrity with our soul truth not the ego and this, this is why we have to master that ego and embody more of the soul so we can actually have like the soul speak through us we see through the eyes of the soul we feel the soul truth in our hearts we live in integrity with our soul truth and then also in fifth dimension is what's called unity consciousness so we're instead of being like um us versus them or either or thinking you know this is separation consciousness we begin to realize that we're all connected we all live in this field together we have light flowing through all of us you know so we begin to live in this uh viewpoint perspective that we're all interconnected and when you begin to live in unity consciousness if someone else is in pain you feel it, you empath their pain. So you begin to have compassion, you, you have empathy. And as you mentioned, Loren, it was hypersensitivity gets stronger in the fifth dimension. We can't just shut off and be indifferent to the pain or suffering in the world. We begin to realize that we have to take action. You know, we have to get involved and, and improve things here. So unity consciousness is a big key. I don't know if people quite understand that it does require you to be involved in the world. So it's not leaving and isolating, it's actually pulling you back in. Um, I found it was kind of like a, a cycle. I had to pull out when I awakened to be able to observe and learn and watch and, and work on myself. And now I'm coming back in and getting more present, more, more integrated with the world and more involved. And then just another quick uh, overview. Uh, we talk about the awakening, the quickening, the great shift. Um, so this is what we're experiencing. And it's the alchemy of time and matter as we return to our natural state of light. So as we begin to convert the carbon in our cells, uh, we're crystallizing ourselves. We're starting to become beings of light. And as you are working with your ascension column your chakra pillar uh this is this is our channel up to our higher self to source to the abundant universe and it also has density in it right so as we work on opening up the chakra column opening up uh clearing density trauma out of the chakras this is your channel your conduit for the soul to move up and down vertically in your field this is when um, you may feel the kundalini flowing up and down that's your soul energy that's your soul life force so we're converting from carbon to a crystalline light body that's the vessel that the soul can live in and i do want to make this point too um loren because 
sometimes I hear stuff out there that I find a little little misleading, but I believe at this time, this is like a free will choice point for every soul on the planet. We all have the opportunity to actively do these steps and ascend into fifth dimension and higher and, and begin to live in the fifth dimensional field. So, so if it helps you to understand it, it, think of it like we've got two fields on the planet uh, active right now. They're like parallel fields. And one is this older three-dimensional, four-dimensional field that is very low dense density and it's not doing so well. It's starting to, the systems are starting to collapse. And then we have uh, this parallel field. That's the fifth dimensional field and it's awakening and blossoming and growing and spreading. And so everyone can make that choice to bridge into the fifth dimensional field and be the temple and ground it in and anchor it in as our future. So that's it for just a little quick intro and i'll come back to you uh, that's beautiful because um when you see the old earth okay so let's talk about where we put our attention and as we as we anchor into unity consciousness we see that we must take action we do need to speak up and it's really interesting and even some of the groups we've worked in recently even um this one group um everyone in that group had the same past life experience of actually being taken out, strangled actually because of speaking our voice. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're clearing out with when we do this sort of work. And so when we step up to get involved and take more action and get wildly creative with these ideas, like so crazy and wild that it's like, what if, and we share that information, it's beautiful. Um, we do have to take action. I've heard that at the end of this year, December 21st, 2020, mm -hmm that we will fully be in unity consciousness. And that is, as you mentioned, where we all understand that we are one and that what we do affects one another. And look at what on a global scale we're going through. So true. So, so true. true. And it's even like all parts of you become unified. So then you you can't disassociate from what you're feeling anymore, right? You, you It's like, now is it like, be real. Deal with what's coming through you, heal it, clear it, whatever it needs. So we have to be really present and paying attention to how we're, you know, navigating this choppy year because it is it is challenging. So being in unity consciousness, your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies all start to unify into one. And so you can't disassociate. You can't, you know, do the spiritual gaslighting anymore. You have to actually deal with it. You have to be with yourself. You have to heal it. And then you're able to... Um, come from a much wiser and more compassionate place to get involved, as you're saying, get out, because it's um, unity conscious means we're involved in our whole community. I, I get a lot of pushback, people saying, well, why are you so involved in politics and what's happening? I go, because you can't disassociate it. You can't separate it. In unity consciousness, it's all one. You know, politics is spiritual and spiritual, you know, it's all one. So you are starting to understand that we influence the field. We influence it with what we think, what we focus on, what we visualize, what we energize, and and it's it's all go seeding right into the field. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about that then too, because it's so easy. In okay, I want to back up and talk about honoring the free will. So we're honoring the free will. And also that means that we are sovereign. And what we've learned in this process as we're going through this is if it truly is someone's free will and we're releasing judgment, then we allow others to go around, um, go about in their sovereign way and make decisions that they know how to make. We are evolving to a level where inside of us, we each know what to do. Once we clear out this density, we know what to do without being asked. That's what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And so let's talk about those who, um, it's easy to get caught up in conspiracy theories. Mm -hmm. um, and you were saying that we need that because we can't disassociate, but let's focus on where we should put our energy. It is more valuable and beneficial to look at the crazy chaos that's going out there and think of wildly creative solutions like 
oh my gosh, what if you did this with all these commercial buildings? What if instead of commercial mm -hmm. buildings, these were turned into parks? We're starting to see our carbon footprint is going down tremendously. Mm -hmm. And that even though people are working from home, the energy consumption at home has only gone up 1.4%. And that's huge because we're huge. seeing huge solutions. So what would you say for those? I mean, we can get fearful. We can say, oh no, this is going to happen. But it's important to say, all right, that's over. That's done with. Let's focus on solutions rather than watching the old crumble, right? Yeah, it's a good point because uh, let's talk real quick about conspiracy theories because in, in my opinion, that's where you're still in 4D. You're still focused in the astral plane on, on potential timeline outcomes or even false timelines. You're, you're putting your energy into it. And, but the, why would, you know, why are you attracted to that? So why are you attracted to um, all of this stuff of, you know, the, the, the big dark evil beings that are trying to harm us? Well, that's still coming from victim consciousness, you guys. So you still got some clearing to do on victim consciousness. You can, you can look at the news and I'm talking about something that actually has happened, not what people are predicting. I only, I only pay attention to what has already happened as I call the news. So there is some factual basis there. Otherwise it's speculation. And most of the conspiracy theories that I've seen have a lot of sensationalism in them. And that should be a red flag to you because they're trying to hit your victim consciousness. They're trying to create paranoia. They're trying to create that us against them, right? You mm -hmm. know, so there you go, more separation consciousness. So uh, whenever I see it, I, I actually recoil from it because of that very energy, that sensationalism and the kind of battle energy that is what is polarity. So just know that if you're really getting riled up in it, do a little more clearing on victim consciousness so that you can actually see it observe it you're neutral and you're like well it's just speculation at this point so let's not give a whole lot of attention to it or energy to it so that's where i i handle and it's only 4d right you're trying to ascend where you're actually out of all of that paranoia and you know good versus evil battle and that might be difficult for a light worker to hear because they'll think well aren't we here to battle evil well no we're actually here to ascend <laughs> we're here to transmute that's the second phase transmute everything that is not of love and of the light so no we're not going to battle it i can remember in the early years of my awakening i kept hearing from myself go do not engage, do not engage, do not go into that battle because it just pulls you right into the, the victim consciousness again. So that's just one point I wanted to mention about conspiracies. But then as we get more into, into this 5D field, you, you begin to, it's like you kind of rise up above the battle. You begin to be in more of a, a state of joy and everything goes, runs smoothly. And you're, you don't have all these ups and downs anymore, right? You're in the zero point, you're, everything is flowing in your life and you're filling up, you're really filling up with life force and light and, and power, you know, our, our power is our light. So as that builds, then you aren't so susceptible, I think, to some of this stuff. And you're able then, like you said, focus on these new ideas. How are we going to build our new earth? I keep getting visions of, I think our federal government's probably going to be obsolete at some point. And we're going to come back to managing our communities. Like, like we start taking care of ourselves, feeding ourselves, working more small, much local, smaller scale, I think is what's going to come. Yes, I think we're already starting to see that. Um, yeah, where the local municipalities are making decisions affecting, and it comes from a coronavirus health threat that makes people understand. And so that's why we say for all new earth leaders, everyone watching this right now, speak our voice, speak, speak. If you're afraid, afraid of speaking your voice or afraid of being seen, come out, come out wherever you are. Mm -hmm. This is important times to step up and share your voice. And I even want to go so far as get really wild and maybe go do a press release to your local television station. Wouldn't it be amazing if we have more stories like this? Even, I mean, everything is up for renewal. The education system, I think we'll have 
meditation in schools. We're already starting to see some hybrid of where there's an online, maybe there's an every other day in school. So you mm -hmm. have some online time and free time and everything just seems more balanced in this yeah. in this field where um you know it might not be so easy for some who are working from home with children and with pets and distractions mm -hmm. but this is where everyone is being called to balance in yeah. new ways and it's so beautiful i see people taking i see children out playing with nature swings yes nature gardening teaching children gardening like really getting more into nature again instead of always being inside a classroom like, yes. And I also think if we want to, you know, stop more pandemics, we need to work on our healing our planet and yeah. and not denying climate change, but realizing we need to flow with what's happening. The changes are happening. They are real. And so let's let's adjust to them. Let's make sure that we can preserve our communities. I mean, where I live, uh, and I think you might actually have some of this too, Lauren, we can have forest fires all summer, you know, and then other people have tremendous flooding. I mean, so we let's let's acknowledge this is happening. And I personally feel COVID came out of a uh, glacier melt, you know, uh, instead of being, you know, humanly created to harm people. Um, and I think we're going to have more coming out of glacier melts because of the climate change. So let's get ready, you know, let's get back involved with keeping the pollution down. You know, our, our, our administration is passing all these laws to create more pollution. We need to do the opposite. So it's, it's, I think it's really where we have to find a way that you're most comfortable speaking your truth. Um, I'm on an email basis with my Senator here in Oregon. I mean, I'm like, I know, and I donate to the food bank and I do whatever I can to help our communities and get involved. They listen to us. They actually do. So whatever way you feel comfortable doing it, but your voice is valuable and it's why you're here. And so this is why we have to get involved now. <laughs> you're, you're mute get involved in the old system that is evolving so that means speaking our voice and the good news is in these months um people are not rolling their eyes at this stuff anymore they're opening to it to new levels and so that's really good very important all right game on mm -hmm. um and also when we uh, you're going to lead us through a little process here so we can fully anchor our feet onto the 5d earth grid but I want to share as well an example, you know, when we're here and our environments get, maybe some people are living in tight quarters and they can hear neighbors and hear people. Mm -hmm. um, my own personal experience, my own, own sharing for everyone to understand in this process that we're talking about is that, um, you know, even this morning at like 540 AM, the sun was out and my neighbor, a new neighbor, um, gets in his truck and starts idling. It's a loud truck and mm. starts idling the truck. Um, and it's a, it's one of those F one fifties or something. So they're loud diesel. And one thing we can think of new systems that kind of bring in peace and harmony because people appreciate it more, but I had to look at why that triggered me so much. Why would that trigger me? And this goes for all of us. We can so easily be triggered, um, because everyone's fear is coming up in such huge ways right now. So what we do is I had to look uh, at that and it was basically uh, in my own uh, false beliefs, it was a level of control, right? Mm -hmm. It was a level of control. So instead of um, feeling like that should stop, that sound should stop, I used it to actually make me come into center even more. And it was then, it, then the engine turned into like a purring sound, like a cat. Mm. So these are, this is what we're all being asked to step up to. And if we can assist other people to understand this, that is huge work that we're doing for our planet. Well, I think you made a good point too, because when you can um, get into the reaction and be with it and then start to neutralize it, then you're in a more empowered position to go take action really consciously and mindfully. You're not reacting, right? And so you can have a more mindful conversation or debate, whatever it turns into without it having to just kind of go down the rabbit hole, right? So you're, the more that you're able to maintain you know, your integrity and your neutrality, 
uh, of emotion. So it's just that egoic reaction that we're trying to calm down so then we are more effective in how we uh, uh, face what's happening, right? We, we need to have our shit together. We need to be able to go into this and be very formidable, but also conscious and mindful. And then people will be able to hear us. I find that if I'm ranting and raving, no one wants to, you know, everyone just shuts off, right? Eh, not listening, don't want to hear you, right? But if I can speak from the heart, it's somehow people are able to receive it more clearly and and go, oh, okay. You know, so the more that we can do that, just be calm, speak from the heart, and we can change the world. <laughs> All right. This is beautiful. Speak from the heart and we can change the world. So happy <laughs> speaking, everyone. Right. Meg, lead us on a, a, um, an exercise here that can help us anchor to the 5D and actually learn to listen to how we speak from the heart. Because mm -hmm. What I see happening is we're kind of all coming down from this mental body, right? We're all starting to come down and be more in the heart space as kind of our, our center of our universe. So we're not approaching life through thinking and analyzing it anymore. We're approaching it from how it feels. And so that's why we're getting more sensitive. So at first I was like, and people would say, oh, you're so sensitive as an insult. And I was like, I, so I started taking it that way, right? And then I, um, of course, you know, my higher self's like, don't listen to them. Your sensitivity is your gift. It's getting stronger. It's getting more powerful. So don't be afraid of your sensitivity. Allow that it is it's it's your discernment you know it, and it's your power to get into the fifth dimension so we're letting our sensitivity grow um i just had to also make sure i had boundaries around me as my sensitivity grew stronger and then that way then you will feel like you're in a good space to move into the fifth dimension so i'm going to just walk you through a couple steps this is part of my healing modality, it's called quantum access. And this has been shown to me over the years uh, in my interaction with my higher self and with Archangel Metatron. Uh, it's using his sacred geometry Metatron's cube and I actually have a picture of it here. Metatron's cube. Looks like this. And it's, uh, there's six outer circles, six inner circles, and then a center circle. And embedded in it is the double star tetrahedron. So this, keep this in mind, because this is what we're going to use when we activate the, um, the vortex, okay? So we're going to get on this. Imagine you're going to step on it right in the center, the center circle. All right, so I'm visual. Always helps me to have the visual. All right, so let's just uh, focus now inward. So we're going to take a couple of deep breaths and come inside into the body, into the heart, the breath, into the belly. You're just getting centered and present in the body. And if you can sit with your feet on the floor or stand, so we're going to use our feet chakras like magnets. And we're going to lock onto our path of light. So you can get a sense of that. And they, they actually do lock. They, it's almost like suction. The, the feet chakras will um, take hold. Now, we've been born into the three-dimensional field. And so we've been just locking and grounding our feet and our whole energy body onto the three-dimensional grid. So we want to now upgrade, right? We want to ascend. So as we're grounding right now, just take a, a moment and connect with your soul presence, connect with Mother, Father, Source, connect with your support team of angels and spirit guides, ascended masters and teachers. And we're gonna connect with Gaia and her fifth dimensional field and connect into that field with her spirit guides with her devas and fairies, with her elementals of air, fire, water, earth, and ether. So as we're tuning in to this beautiful like garden of Eden field on the planet, we're gonna now move our feet to ground onto our soul's 5D timeline. So this is your path of light in the fifth dimensional field. So it might almost feel like you're kind of moving uh, like tracks at a train station. If you need to, you can unlock from where you're on the old one and shift over and get onto the path of light in the fifth dimensional field. This is your, there we go. Okay, I feel everyone's starting to lock onto it. 
and this is your home base now. This is where you're going to keep rising up higher and higher with your feet really rooted with light to your fifth dimensional timeline, your fifth dimensional path of light. And as we get grounded onto it and onto Metatron's cube under our feet there on, on your path, those 12 circles of, uh, uh, on Metatron's cube start to rise up as 12 circles of light up and around the body and the aura. So let it rise up. Oh, and they're humming and vibrating to the ohm tones, sacred ohm. And as they begin to vibrate stronger, they, those pillars begin to rotate. And it's going to go right to left counterclockwise around the aura. Okay, here we go. We're starting to get it moving. Now, as it's spinning, it's beginning to accelerate, and it's a, it's a radiant vortex. That means it's a feminine vortex, so it's actually expanding your field outwards and upwards into the higher dimensions. So allow yourself to open and expand your field. The vortex is spinning faster, and it's starting to increase your energy frequency. Um, that's what a frequency is. It's a measurement of your spin off oscillation. As you spin faster, spin your aura faster, spin your energy faster, spin your atoms faster, we're going up in frequency. And as we're spinning faster and faster towards the speed of light, we begin to collapse the time barriers of the fourth dimension and open the field all the way out to the quantum level. And there we go. Whew all the way out to the virtual particle field. So now we can connect both physical and non-physical. So we wanna go quantum. All right, we're in. And so now let's come inside, focusing inwards again to your energy body, your light body. And I meant, mentioned earlier, there's your chakra column. So let's go at the base uh, root, start there at the base. And we're gonna do an inward spiral again and anti-clockwise and we're rising up the channel and as you're coming up the channel imagine you're spinning out density and trauma out of the chakras and we're starting to create a clear open channel all the way up there's 12 total seven in the body five above the crown we're going up 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 to the top Ooh, opening and clearing channel all the way up to our higher self up at the top at the 12th and so we get up here and imagine there's your beautiful soul presence, the beautiful light being, and you can make a connection to your soul energy. I always do like heart to heart, to my heart self, to my soul presence. And as we get that connection, start to really feel our own divine energy, we're gonna start bringing it back down the channel. So we're reversing, vertically coming back down. And we're gonna bring our soul into the body. So the soul is made of your light, your energy signature, and your frequencies, your sound waves. So imagine if you're looking up your channel, it's wide open now up to the heavens, and we breathe down and in. So light, so love, so essence, so consciousness. Breathe it in, starting to stream down the channel into all the chakras, down to the root at the base. Ooh, all the way down and in. We're still spinning anti-clockwise, but now it's coming down. Let's go into the heart center, feeling with so love, so light, so presence in the heart center. Ooh, starts to fill and grow like a big sun, even going beyond the body into the aura, just like a cosmic heart, big sun of soul light. There you go. Ooh, that feels good. Just keep filling. This is your power. Your light is your power. Your wisdom is your power. Your compassion in the heart is your power. It's growing stronger. And then let's neutralize the polarity. So as we mentioned earlier, we're gonna use the infinity eight. So looping it left, right, horizontally at the heart and then left, right, horizontally at the right and left hemisphere. And it kind of centers right there on your uh, third eye chakra. As they weave back and forth, they're starting to bring disparate energies to unite in the center and balance. Okay, there you go. So you might feel some movement happening there. Let's focus on the center of the infinity in the heart and the mind. And this is called zero point. So if you notice, it's there's no movement. It's very still. 
is zero gravity, it's no polarity. So imagine you're bringing your energy into your heart and your mind into that zero point balance, into that calm. Ooh, there we go. <sighs> into the calm. Everything just starts to smooth out. Also, the mind and the heart are beginning to come into coherence. And that's what we need for the soul to really flow in and fill in. And it also begins to repel out any non-coherence or negative polarized charge. So let's use the vortex and we're going to spin out whatever is rising up to release up off the physical body, emotional body, mental body, back to source light. Whew. Release it out. And this could be polarity coming in from the field or the collective or the family or wherever. It doesn't matter. We're just releasing it out so that we're establishing that zero point coherence in our field and we're the observer of the world and we're becoming the home of the soul even more soul energies coming down and in and we're filling our hearts with love with divine light and that opens the door to the fifth dimensional field so it's like we're kind of pulling ourselves into it, starting to move. I moved incrementally into it. Uh, this is probably about 15 years ago, and I began to slowly get into it until I could get all of myself into it. So just be patient with you as you're moving in. I went in heart first. That's, that's our door. That's our bridge. Imagine the, the heart's opening the bridge to the fifth dimensional field and higher. And we're moving into a field of love, of harmony, of collaboration, of coherence, of unity consciousness. It's, it's, um, it's a non-polarized field. Think of it like every, every atom is just bobbing in this field in coexistence. There's no push-pull. Everything is in ease. This is our home that we're creating here now. This is what we're anchoring in and living in and building in and creating in and loving in. And then also because we have these powerful gateways coming, we're getting a transmission coming down from the higher self. So you've got your channel open now. So just open and receive in from your higher self, a light transmission to come down the crown and into the brain and down into the body. And this is to prepare you for these gateways coming. So let's just breathe that in for a minute. This is a, a gift from our higher self. Ooh, a light transmission might give you new insights, new visions, new ideas, open the heart bigger, but it's preparing us for these really powerful gateways in June, July, and August. Oh. And the vortex is spinning it in, integrating it in, coming one with us. It's going into the light body, activating more of the light body. And with this open channel, our soul, our higher self can give us all that we need as we continue on this path, going higher and higher in our ascension. There we go. And as that is integrating, we're going to spin inwards now all the activations we've done. So now we're spinning inwards and it's merging in, blending in, just becoming one with us. It's activating the RNA and DNA, updating. Whew. We have more soul in the mind and the heart, the body now. You're grounded onto your fifth dimensional path of light. And we set this into motion now. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are vibrating at a higher level than when we began incredible work we are anchored on 5d feeling the compassion of our hearts and the wisdom mm -hmm. of our hearts 
Thank you. What a beautiful gift, Meg. This was um, just a beautiful gift from our higher self in this light transmission. Yes. I can feel it tingling still. Woo. So yes. let it ride, everyone. Yes. Yeah. Um, we can we can come back to this at any time mm -hmm. or we can let this ride. So I encourage everyone to really hold this vibration and get creative and start to journal some of these new ideas and yes. new ideas that you have in ways that you can show up or um, new ideas just for the planet itself. As we know, when these ideas are given to all of us, they're out there. It's just a matter of what we do with it. So whether we just share it and talk about it with other people or do it ourselves, it is beautiful and we are feeling empowered. Thank you. Mm. Beautiful. So, mm. yes, Meg, you have, there's a course that you're teaching. We learned a little bit of it today. This goes even deeper. Um, it's a two hour course, an online course, of course. And this is coming up in June, right before these incredible gateways. So, talk a little bit about what this is. It's a nice opportunity for everyone to join in. So oh, it's it is a it's a, a video Zoom webinar, and we'll be going through uh, a lot of um, material on this whole process. I'm going to go really deeper into those three stages for you know awakening, transmutation, and embodiment, and how that shows up for us, and and ways we can work through it, and then also activating more of the light body, more of the um, double star tetrahedron, and Merkaba and the Taurus getting that opening up to multiple dimensions. So it's, um, it's, it's like, you know, womb to tomb, we're going to go through the whole process as much as we can in two hours. Um, I may go over two hours, uh, cause I do want to take questions and I do want to do a live activation as well in, in the class. Um, and if you can't make it, uh, on the day or time, it's June 17th at 5 PM Pacific, it will all be recorded so that you can work with it on your own time if that works better for you. Um, but it's, part of uh, me preparing courses, modules that I'm gonna be offering on my new academy. So this will be the first one. So I'm real excited to share. This is where, this is what it's all about. This is where we start, 3D to 5D. <laughs> this is it. And we are moving from 3D to 5D. All right. Uh, so as we open to this, I know there's questions that might come up, like, is there anything that we can do to accelerate this 3D to 5D? I mean, it really is shifting our consciousness so much that we catch ourselves. Is there a real tip over point for us? Like when you notice that yourself? Oh. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I found that when I could get to about 80% soul in staying in, that was my tipping point. And then everything began to flow in more easily, more synchronicities, more abundance, just more loving people. It was more joy. So that seemed for me to be kind of the tipping point um, getting from, I think we start at 50 in a way, right? We're in a polarized field. So we're 50 light, 50 dark. So as we begin to transmute that shadow we get more soul in building 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 and then you hit that tipping point and boy things really take off i have found though that i don't think we can go full 100 percent yet until the planet is more immersed in the frequencies in a way we're kind of traveling together through this process so we rise up help help gaia rise up gaia rises up helps us rise up so it is a bit of you know a collaboration going on there but i think eventually as we are getting towards the 100 percent soul embodiment we really begin to be uh crystallizing living on light by locating like you know telepathic it's just pretty phenomenal so that's that's the that's the reward keep working towards that that's when it, life just gets really pretty amazing and we begin to influence the field around us with our consciousness with our visions with our intentions where we are literally creating this reality with each other and with gaia and with the universe so it's it's pretty phenomenal and i think also on some level gaia is evolving as well to be the heart center of this um this galaxy as well so it's you know every all of it is working towards the same goal here so it's it's really pretty phenomenal and and it's really picking up speed now as we go into the 2020s really picking up speed 
Yes, game on. The shift is on. Yes, we are in deep shift. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, beautiful. So one question that comes up. Oh, I want to remind everyone, um, Meg Benedicte's um, course is here on this webpage. Scroll down and see it and join it. If you've loved this experience, you're welcome to go deeper with Meg. She is a fantastic guide. She has helped thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people around the world. She is a true new earth leader and helping all of us really anchor into the 5d so one question that comes up meg is the vision of new earth and we always talk so regularly and consistently for people to hold their vision of new earth so let me ask you what is your vision of new earth as best you can see it <gasps> All right, so on kind of the physical level, I see it as a Garden of Eden. It's just lush. I think the closest I've seen to it so far is in Mount Shasta, where it's just like all the plants are alive, all the animals have healthy fur, like everything is, the water's clean, and that, you know, it's just um, pretty extraordinary. And we have areas on our planet that aren't like that. So we have to kind of go and heal and clear the toxins, the pollutions and all, and get it back into its natural environment. So on a physical level, we will all be supported with a very healthy ecosystem. You know, we'll be able to have clean air, clean food, clean water. And then I also see, like we mentioned earlier, kind of smaller local communities. And so I, I, I'm not quite sure how the big, big, big metropolitan cities are gonna do. They may be breaking down, I don't know. But it, I, I left because I couldn't, I couldn't be in the 5D in in Los Angeles. It was too, it was too much for me. So I came to more of a, um, uh, a mountain town. And so just seeing where you're drawn to, that's more resonant for you. That will support your ascension, and then start getting more a community based. And it's, it's, um, it's a collaboration. It's not where we have one person making all the policies and all the rules. I think that's going out the window. This is more where in unity consciousness, we all have a say and we all want to make sure that every everyone's needs are met. And so to me, unity consciousness in, in, um, in action is a win-win. It's where everyone is winning. So you, maybe you're just collaborating with one person or with a, another business or another nonprofit, and it's making sure everyone is winning in this whole collaboration. So it's, and that's the opposite of what we have right now, which is capitalistic com competition where everyone's trying to beat each other like so only one can win if someone loses. Well, that's what we're eliminating. That's what we're shifting out of. And I think it's really more also where we support those who are the artists and the gardeners and the mothers. And, you know, it's not so much just the billionaires, millionaires. I think that whole system of celebrity and all that has to kind of go out the window too, because we're putting other people on a pedestal that is false. It's a, it's an illusion. We all need to be seeing each other equally as sovereign beings and treating each other as sovereign beings. And that goes both ways. That way's then you're also respected. Your boundaries are respected. Your health is respected. So it's it's a uh, it. So if you, as I'm describing it, it's really a flow between each other, between us and nature, between us and our communities. It all has to be a balanced flow. A balanced flow, and we will get there. I know we will. I know we will. And so one thing as well, I mean, even social media is up for uh, an upgrade. Everything yeah. in a lower integrity that affords people a place to not be that sovereign or allow sovereignty will be upgraded. Yet we can still use it in a beautiful way. In you know, All of the old infrastructure can be updated would you say into these new earth templates well yeah if they're not driven by money that's the if. problem that's the problem that's what we have to go fix yeah if they're not just driven by making more money because that corrupts their decision making you know and their priorities yeah so yeah yeah Yes. And so, you know, we talk a lot about this and as um, people leave the old earth and the 3D matrix and follow that passion and the joy 
um, that is what is the the leading driving force. It is no longer, it is flipped where it is no longer in consideration of the money. However, as we're still in a system that uses it, when mm -hmm. we make this a subtle shift like that, it allows us that space to um, be of service in the world mm -hmm. and yet be provided for. But the key is that we're not setting it from that goal, like you right. mentioned, of right. earning the buck off it. That's, so it's quite beautiful. It. Yeah. 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 There that's is a heart. Service from the heart. heart. Yep. Service from the heart. And so then if the you'd money like flows. Ah. Yeah. It's just service a different from the heart. priority. Yeah. All I literally right. feel that this financial support is love coming into the heart. It's just more giving out and it's able to now come back. We're able to receive it come back in now in that flow yes the operative word is the flow and the flow <laughs> of love the flow of the heart what a beautiful journey all right one quick question as we sign off here uh elizabeth would like to know about that meditation with the activation with metatron's cube does it work on its own or can we invite it in Yes, you can invite it in and it's, um, it, I've been doing it every day. I, I start my morning with it. I just get grounded onto that fifth dimensional path and work with Metatron's cube. Get, I'm always in the vortex since I've been doing it for 26 years. It's now integrated with my field, with the Merkaba, with the Taurus, and it's just always running. And so there uh, is uh, at my at my website, there is a, a video that you can work with that visually um, shows you the steps as well. So you get a, a, a custom to doing it on your own. Um, uh, my website's newearthcentral.com. And that was then uh, this, I'm, I'm just the, the messenger of this with Metatron, just helping bring this out to the world so that everyone can benefit from using it. Yes, thank you so much. Meg Benedicte, uh, tremendous new earth way shower and leader and light bringer. And if you'd like to work with her, she is available for that facilitation. Meg, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank we you, love Lauren. this expression today. This is new earth and we are one and we're so glad that you could be here with us. Thank you for having me. Just a joy to be here. And keep going with what you're doing. <laughs> Everyone keep going with yeah. what you're doing. New <laughs> Earth is here and how it unfolds is dependent on us. And I think we got this. Don't lose sight of it and no. don't don't give up if it's a dollar short. Don't give up at all. Just it's hold the vision and do yeah, these tools. This. Yes. It's already here. We're beginning to see it revealed more and more. Mm -hmm. And we thank all of your voices for sharing that with Gaia. It is why each of us came at this moment in time. Yes. Thank you, Meg. Oh, thank you, Lauren. Thank you, thank everyone. You, everyone. Thanks. <laughs>